I'm happy to see you this morning, and I will tell you this. Behind the eight pew, it will double priced, okay? <laughs> so come over, and you will receive a discount on it. I mean it. <laughs> you will receive a, 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 a statement on, on your mailbox telling you last Sunday you were behind, so that's what it cost. Happy to see you this morning. How you been doing all week? It was a good week? Blessed week? No hail. Hot week? No hail. That's, that's good. So, I will pray that things like that doesn't happen because my wife put me to broom the whole sidewalk. Even though I, I waited to the uh, 8 o'clock night, I mean, it was hot. Good exercise, but it was hot. I, I, I end up all sweat and, and, and thirsty. But we survived. And God is good, right? So, do we have any joys or concerns or complaints? I learned that complain and concern are not the same thing. Yes. Yes. Swimmers? From here? Okay. I'm not well informed about what's going on in the community yet, but I will. I'll, I'll, I'll get the pace, okay? All right. That's a good news. Something else? Yes. Please. All right. Is, is, that, is that a concern? Is that a joy or a complaint? <laughs> it's still up in the air. Uh, yeah. You'll find out then. All right. Someone else. Come on. Birthdays? Anniversaries? My son turned seven on Friday. Seventeen. Yeah. Seven. Okay. Well, there is no time to be concerned, but it will It'll come. <laughs> Weddings, anniversaries, gift for the pastor or something to cheer about, Tom? We finally cut our first load of the week yesterday. All right. That's a blessing. Yes, absolutely. All right, this is my third week with you guys, and that's an achievement so far. <laughs> Let us pray. Precious God, you know our hearts. You know what we do every day, and we know that we need you in everything we do. You have heard our concerns and our joys, and thank you for allowing us to be alive and be here and the sanctuary, to lift our prayers, to share our concerns, but overall to praise your name. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. <laughs>
please join me in the opening prayer. Lord, you know us so well. We thank you for your presence in our lives, even when we do not recognize it. This day we have gathered, coming from a week of unexpected happenings and events which have surprised us. Makes us ready to become stronger witnesses of your love as we receive your word and find our spirits and lives healed. Amen. Please be stand as you are able and join me singing Be Thou My Vision 451 on your books or in the screens. Let us read the call to worship. God scatters the seas of reconciliation and love and waits. God scatters the seeds of healing and hope and waits. God scatters the seeds of redemption and peace and waits. Welcome this day to a city scattering station. May our hearts be rich soil in which God loves to take root. Amen. Please be seated and let's hear the scriptures for today. Are there any little people out there? Come, come, come. I have a story to share. Kids, nobody's children. Beckett, you're the only brave one to come up here today? Good Lord of mercy. Oh, here comes a couple more. Good morning, girls. I'm glad you were brave like Beckett. Yes. Well, have either of you or anybody out there ever been to camp? A camp where you go and spend a week or two without your parents and stay all night? No? Well, I have a little story to tell you. I started going to camp for three days without my parents when I was six. And then when I was nine years old, I was old enough to go to a YMCA camp in the Lake Bamba in the Ozarks in Missouri. 
And I went there every summer until I was in high school when I became a counselor. And at that camp, let me tell you a little bit about it. We had no indoor plumbing. We had outhouses. We had no sinks to brush our teeth, so we did it under a faucet like you have in your backyard. We did have a shower up on the hill, but it had no roof. So while you were showering with 12 or 14 other people, you could watch the stars and the trees. We got to ride horses. We got to swim in a lake, no pool. We canoed. We rowboat, we did arts and crafts, we hiked, we went on campouts outside of our, and the cabin we lived in was like a screened in porch with eight bunks. So there were bugs, and there was humidity, and I loved it. I went back every year, started in two weeks, and then I went to three weeks, and then I was a counselor. At this camp, the YMCA had posted over the, um, doors of the cabins and at the dining hall. The sign that said, I'm third. It was everywhere. And so the first night we were at a big campfire with everybody and they explained to us what I'm third meant. And it meant God first in your life, the other fellow, the other person is second, and I'm third. Have any idea what that might mean? Well, we had devotions every morning, every night before we went to bed. We sang some awesome graces in the dining room, dining hall. They wanted us to remember God is first in our life no matter what. We need to pray to him. We need to think about him. We, we need to thank him. And pastor last week reminded us that before we got out of bed and before we were begging for our first cup of coffee, we should talk to God. Thank him, ask him for forgiveness, help give us guidance for the day. And that's what this motto meant. Think of God first in your life. And then everybody else is second. Now, who's everybody in your life, Beckett? Who's everybody else in your life? Huh? Your brothers? Anybody else? Your parents? Anybody else? Nobody? Not even me? <laughs> Pastor? Grandma? Are those the other people in your life? Who are the other people in your life? You don't have other people in your What about her? Is she your sister? Isn't she an other person? Yeah. What about your neighbor? You have neighbors? Do you have school friends? Aren't they the other person? What about the guy at the grocery store? Are they the other person? Yes, they are. Your swim teacher, the lifeguards at the swimming pool, those are the other people. And we are to think about them second in our life. And then remember that I'm third, which helps you not to be so selfish. Now, your mother, how can you be nice to her? Take your plate to the sink. Set the table. Take out the trash. Don't argue with your siblings about it. I did it last night. I did it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Think about the other person. They don't want to do it, but you are not selfish, so you will help. Okay? So remember to put God first in your life. The other person, which they could be this, they could be this, or they could be old ladies like me. I'm the other person in your life, too. Hold the door. Help me up out of my chair, which my grandkids do. Okay? Think about the other person and remember that I'm third. Okay? I don't need, Oh, we do have treats. And I have a little card for you. I don't know. It'll probably get lost in your room, but you could put it on the refrigerator. It might even help your brothers and sisters to remember to put God first, the other person second, and I'm third. And I think Pastor has some treats for us. Okay. One of the other people in your life is Miss Pat. And I think Miss Pat probably has a great Sunday school hour planned for you. So be sure and thank her, because she's the other person. 
okay? Thank you for coming. I'm glad you're in church today. First reading, scripture reading, is from Psalms 119. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow his ways. You have left laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways are steadfast in obeying your decrees. I, then I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees do not utterly forsake me. Our second scripture reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might fully be met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live in according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though our body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Hey, sorry. Let us sing the uh, song. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. But let me tell you this: as we did last Sunday, let's sing along with the music, and then we make a pause, and then we will sing a cappella without music, just to sink a little bit on what every word says, okay? And then we will sing again, the third time with the music again. things 
Romans is one of the most hardest book of the Bible to speak about. It is really so theological that Paul was trying to teach the Roman church about what it means to be a Christian. But in this time, I, I want to share with you three things about the verses that we read already, that Sarah read for us. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, on my opinion, can be divided on three parts. First, uh, tells us, it is 1 to 4, verses 1 to 4, which tells us that there is no condemnation on those who are in Christ because the love of the Spirit has freed them from death and sin. First thing, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Can you share with me a little bit about what it means, condemnation? Can you share with me an example about what it means to be condemned? Nobody, nobody in this place has been invited to be a judge in, in, a, in, a, in a trial. No? Well, I received uh, at least one or two invitations when I was in Topeka, and I rejected it because I don't think that is my thing. But <clears throat> in order to be condemned, you have to be judged, right? So... You have to go to a trial. Once the uh, judges see your case, they examine the proofs. After some consideration, they will become with a sentence, right? Then once you receive the sentence, it can be, you can be exonerated, you can be declared guilty, and then you will receive the punishment. It can be life sentence, it can be years of sentence, it can be just, you can go free. Well, the Bible says that those who abide in Christ are not condemned. Now, the second question is what it means to abide in Christ? What it means to be in Christ? It is the same thing to be at the church that in the church. Same thing? No? What is the difference? I will be at the church. It means I can be in the premises around, right? And I am at the church. But if I say I am in the church, it means I am inside and I am part of it, right? So, if we are in Christ, then we know Christ, but we also are in, we are alone, we think the same as he thinks. Because we have the same spirit as Christ's spirit. So we are free from death and sin. Second, Romans chapter 8, verses 5 to 8 says, that in the world are two kind of mentality. Those who think about the things of this world and those who put their minds in things of the spirit. What kind of Christian are you? What kind of person are you? There is a people who thinks always about this world. Is worried about what is in this world. They want to get a better job, more money. They want to make some uh, more profit. They want to be successful people. They, 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 they want everything what is in this world. And thus, they commit their life to this world. Whatever this world says, they will fall alone. So, in our case, as Christians, if we have Christ's mind, then... What we will do, what we will seek. Any ideas? 
Yes, but what it means follow the Spirit? We need to set our mind on spiritual things. Now, tell me, how often do you find yourself every day thinking on God, on the Spirit, or spiritual matters? How often do you find yourself thinking, oh, this should be God telling me something. Oh, this should be a time right for, for, for praise God because what's going on. Or maybe this is the time that I have an opportunity to share with someone else about my relationship with Christ. No. Most of the time we are worried and we are concerned about what we're going to dress, what we're going to eat, what we're going to do, what our business outcome would be, what should I do to improve it. All our thoughts, many of our thoughts are grounded in this world. That's why sometimes we, we find difficult to find time for our devotions, to praise God, to follow his will. How often do you read the Bible? I'm not just saying every morning when you get up and you get your devotions and then you read the Bible and then you, you forget about Christ. I already did my, I, I already did my Christ with time, my, my time with Christ. I pray, I read the Bible, that's it. God, I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. And that's it. That's our Christian life. When we live by the Spirit, every single moment of our life is committed to Christ. To seek God's will. If we have a trial, what God is trying to teach me. If we have a good news, what God is trying to teach me. What he wants me to do with this time of joy, with this blessing that I received today. What would be the best I can do? Do I am behaving as Christ, child? You know what? Being in Christ is not easy. Being in Christ is a commitment 24-7. Do we all know what it means 24-7? Yes. Can I have a yes? yes? All right. Yes, that's the spirit. Yes. So, the first thing we have to do in, our, in, in order to go along with the spirit is die. Do you, are you dead? What it means, let, let's think a, a little bit about a dead body. You can come to the dead body and you can insult them, right? You can scream at them, you can curse them. And what the body will do? It will, it will react. It will say you are wrong. It will respond to our no. So think in yourself. When somebody comes and says something you do not like, you are not agree with, how do you react to it? I will say, well, I will respond accordingly. That will be my case, but not yours, I, I think. If we live just with our mind setting in this world, then we are not able to follow God because God don't belong to this world. This world belongs to God. It's a difference, big difference. Right? God doesn't belong to this world. No, he is not part of this world. This world belongs to God. We have to live here because... God allows us to be here. But this is not our permanent house. We are just passing by. Right? We are searching, we are seeking, we are walking towards better place. Right? 
So, let me ask you the, this. Are you ready to die? Requirement to go heaven is death. Are you ready? When, when, when I was on, on, on the, one of my former churches, I met a, 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 an old lady. She is about 80 years old, and she is, was facing second cancer surgery. And she said, I don't want, I don't want to die. I want to live longer, maybe beyond 100 years old. Man. After two cancer surgeries, she wants to live 20, 25, 30 more years. I mean, sometimes in the morning when I get up and my, my body aches, and man, I don't, I don't want to live all this the rest of my life. I want to be in a better place with not ache at all. Right? Just getting up, be, hey, uh, be, be in good shape, and then drink my coffee and praise God. That will be the wonderful world for us to live. You have to be dead. Because worldly mind cannot follow God's will. If our mind is set in this world, what it belongs to this world, then we are far away from God's will. Even if I am just following my own will, I am away from God's will. I am not in the right path. Okay? I can be at the church, but it doesn't mean I am in the church. Why do we are here? Can anyone tell me why we are here this morning and every Sunday and every chance we have? Right, that's a good reason to be encouraged because in this world, so many things happen that discourages us, isn't it? What else? What about to be healed? We suffer wounds from our relationship outside with our kids, with our spouses, with our friends, with our employers, with our co-workers. We have disagreements. Sometimes they are hard to handle, and sometimes, in some way, we get hurt, right? Bad news, it hurts us. When uh, someone we love is just not having a good time, it's been ill, it's been wrong, it's been passing really hard time, then we need our brothers and sisters support, right? That's why we're here, to heal each other, to help us to heal each other. When we are in Christ, we are provided with everything to, uh, we need in order to navigate this world in the best way we can. But we need to be in the church, not at the church. We need to be in Christ, not just close to Christ, right? It, it, I mean, being close to Christ, I will be able to know him, but I will not really be in him. I do not think as he thinks. I will not know the way he thinks, the way, the, the, the way he likes things. I will know that Christ is the son of God and things like that, but, but not exactly what he wants from me. How could I behave as he behaved? How could I please God as he pleased God? So, the third part of Romans is chapter, uh, verses 9 to 11, and it begins saying that you are not in the realm of the kingdom of flesh. That you belong to the kingdom of spirit. Do you know the differences? Do you know the difference between this world's kingdom and God's kingdom? Tell me I am in the right place. In God's kingdom, well, let me tell you, in the world's kingdom, it is as Lee says, 
well, the opposite that Lee says to the kids. It will be first me. And then the second will be me. And the third will be, and if they would be a four, it'll be me. Right? Because in this world, we have been taught that everything is about me. What I want, and we are getting, making him worse. This is not just what I want. I mean, when I, uh, when I lived on my parents' house, my mom says, it is my way or the highway, right? Period. Why, mom? And then she says, because I say so. End of discussion, right? Now, when I have grown, I try to say my kids, my way or the highway, and say, uh-uh. They just run after his, uh, their mother and they will talk to her. They find a way to make a round trip, right? But it is not my will. When I try to get things on my will, on my own way, I hurt people. I hurt my wife, I hurt my kids, I hurt the people who love me because I'm thinking just on the way I think. And to make it worse, no, it's just what I think. I want it, and I want it now, right? That's why we, the American, in, 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 in invented the drive-thru. You do not need to come inside a restaurant, make a line, you just go around. Even though you go around to the drive-thru, you have to wait your turn, right? But we want it, and we want it now. One thing I didn't like from my mom, and we never liked it, was when she snapped the fingers. Man, that means we are in jeopardy. Better hurry up to do what she wants us to do. We want it now. That's why we invented instant coffee. I cannot wait the, 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 the pan to boil the water and then put the coffee and wait for it. No, I want it now. Thanks, Pastor Tony. He left me a Keurig coffee maker that just put a little cup in it, push the button, and I have water in less than five minutes. But spiritual life is not, it doesn't happen like that. Our relationship with God doesn't happen like that. We have to cultivate our mind. We have to cultivate our thoughts. We have to cultivate our relationship with Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit. I was prepared for children's sermon this morning. And I brought this because I was, I was speaking about flowers, about plants being raised. If, I, I, I'm, I'm not good gardening, okay? But my grandma used to be a great gardener. She grows apple trees. No, no apple trees. It's pomegranate, pomegranate trees, fig trees, oranges, orange trees, avocado trees, corn. She had a lot of flowers in her garden. But you know what? Every day she was at 6 in the morning in the garden. Watering, gardening, pruning dried leaves, and taking care of those trees early in the morning. My wife loves plants also, interior plants. But still, you have to be devoted sometime every off and on day. No, every day, right? I remember once she went out for couple of weeks or a couple of days, I don't remember. And she put me in charge of uh, taking care of her plants. And she gave me an instructions how to take care of them. Not just water, water the plants. You have to talk to them. And if you can, you, you have to sing them. Man. 
I just watered the plants. <laughs> and some of them were drowned when she came and they were like, what do you do with the plants? Well, I didn't sing and to, seems like. A, what I'm trying to say is, in order to know God's mind, Christ's mind, we have to devote time and effort to understand God's, Christ's mind. Otherwise, Bible will don't make sense to us. What the Bible says, we cannot understand. Why? Because we are not devoted to search God's will in the Bible. If we do not devote ourselves, we do not set time to find out God's will for my life, I will never understand God's will and what he wants and what he says and what is my purpose here in this world. And that's why so many people is lost. That's why my mom used to say, and I'm now that I'm her age, I'm grateful the way she taught me. When I was a kid, when I was in here, I didn't know exactly what to do or what I want. And I'm grateful that so many times she stood up and said, my way or no way. Now I have the right to say my kids, my way or no way. And sometimes they don't care, but uh, I, I can just state it and say that. <laughs> Same thing with God. There are so many things that we try to, to bend in God's will. And God says, my way or no way. If you want to go heaven, you have to cultivate God, Christ's mind. You have to cultivate God's relationship. If we all want to go to heaven, because not everyone going to heaven. We all have the change, the, the chance going to heaven, but in order to go there, we have to develop a relationship with Christ. And it's not doing my will. If I, want to, if I wanted to live in my parents' house, there was rules. Do you remember those? It was a great, great day when my dad handed me a key of the main door. It means you have grown enough to be responsible to get back home in time. And set time for us to get back home was 10 o'clock. So when they gave me the key, yeah, I'm just old enough to have a key. Now, they, 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 the kids claim for my car. I ended up high school, I want my car. My kid, my son learned that when he was in high school. And all his senior year in high school, pay attention to what I'm saying. The whole year, 365 days, 7, 27, 24-7, he was reminded me that he was in his senior year and he was waiting for his car to, del to be delivered. <laughs> That's United States tradition. And I said, yes, but I'm still a Mexican father. So, Let's make a deal, I said, my son. You will save some money, and I will match what, whatever you say. Yeah, save. Then he find a job, and then we find a car for him, exactly what he wants. But he did it on my way, and he get what he wants. So many times we want what we want in our own way, right? I want to be successful in my own way. I want to raise my kids in my own way. I want to grow in my marriage in my own way. And not always work. Ask my wife. Galatians chapter 5, 
Verses 17 to 20 describes the behavior of someone who is not in Christ and who does not God's will, but his will. It says, for the flesh desires are against the spirit. This world, flesh desires are against God's spirit. And the spirit is against the flesh. What it means, our desires, what we want, is against what God wants. As I was with my parents. My parents want me to be at 10 o'clock at home. I was 11. My, pa my dad, we were five brothers, and, my, and we all have to do our chores before we get something. Every Saturday morning, we have a football soccer game. Before we go to the game, our room has to be done. Our beds has to be done. As we were five men, boys, we have to sift, we have to sweep, we have to do wash dishes. House have to be clean before we go to the game because my mom works Monday to Saturday. My dad used to work on night shifts, so he, he get home by 8 o'clock in the morning and he falls asleep the whole day. Otherwise, if we do not comply with those requirements, we will not allow to be in the game. And sometimes game was 8 o'clock in the morning. You know what it means for a teenager getting up 6 in the morning to get everything ready before going to the game? It was a challenge, and it wasn't something we didn't enjoy. But once we were in the, in the, in the soccer field, man, we forget about everything else. We were there with our friends to enjoy the game. There is rules to go in God's house. There is go, rules to go in heaven. We don't like it. We don't enjoy it. But if we fulfill those requirements, there will be a better joy in God's presence that we have here right now. On the other hand, in the other way, Paul is talking about Christian behavior. He is talking about those who have, living, uh, have a living relationship with Christ through the Holy Spirit and understand that they have been called to live a different life, which the Bible calls a holy life. For a long time, we, the church, have forgotten to talk about holiness. Do you realize about that? Are you aware of that? We do not speak very quite often about holiness. What does it mean holiness? What does it mean to be holy? Back in, 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 my, in my grandma's days, being holy means be good to everyone. Please God. And get ready to die. Live by example. Now, I heard someone saying, well, do not imitate me because I'm not perfect. Don't do what I do. Do what I say. That's not a holy life. That is not an exemplary life. We should tell the world, you should live as I live. Not because I'm perfect, but because I am an imitator of Christ, right? And because I have the same mindset as Christ, I will think first in God, then in you, and last in me. I will try to please God the best I can, and I will try to help you out to live as Christ, I will try to help you to be good as Christ is, not as, as good as I am, but as Christ, Christ is. And then we all go in the same path to the same place. Right? Can I receive a yes or an amen? Really? You didn't drink your coffee this morning? All right, can I get an amen? Yes. 
Yes, that's the attitude. Otherwise, I, I will bring coffee for you and you will get a sip of coffee in the main entry. So we have to, in order to live a holy life, we have to have Christ's mind. And Paul says, in order to do that, we have to have the fruit of the Spirit in us. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I will repeat it. And you will say, Amen. If that is your strength. You will have the spirit fruit if you have love. Amen. You have peace. Amen. You have patience. Amen. You have kindness. Amen. Goodness. Amen. Faithfulness. Amen. Gentleness. Self-control. Uh -huh. Don't lie to me. I mean, you can lie to me, but not God. I have found that it's hard for me to be patient. When I do not get things on my way, I just am able to blow, to blow out, to explode. I mean, I have to confess, and I am become vulnerable in front of you. So patience is something I have to focus in, to cultivate on my life. Patience. Patience. And I have a little dog that is not helping me at all. <laughs> Every single time I give him a command, she does the opposite. Self-control. In short, living life in the spirit means to be light of the world, live an example, pleasing God as Christ did. Even more, Ephesians chapter 5 says, follow God's, God's example as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love. Be very careful then how you live. Not as wise, not unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. This world is putting a lot of pressure in us. Especially when we state publicly, I'm a Christian. I love God. The world will fix their eyes on us. And every single time I fail, it will tell you, not that you are a God children, not that uh, you are Christian, right? They will say that to you, they will put it to you. You say you are Christian and you are not behaving like one. This world is putting a lot of pressure in God's children. But be of good cheer. We got God's support. The only thing we have to do is to cultivate a little plant. And that little plant are ourselves. What we should do in order to let a plant grow and flourish? Any thoughts? Water. Second? Yeah. Water. What else? Some nutrients on it. Sunshine. Care. Love. Right? And all these things make you mind be set on. You have to take care of this little plant. And if you do that, the plant will reward you. How? Bringing flowers? 
bringing fruit, bringing good things to you, right? Same thing with Christ. Same thing with God. If we cultivate our relationship with him, not just off and on, that we have time, a specific time to meet with him, to know him, to hear him, to ask him, he will reward us with blessings, answering our prayers, and allowing us to go heaven. There will be fruit. Would you join me please in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I ask my wife to uh, uh, lend me a, a plant of hers. And then he said, this is a plastic one. This is a fake one. Take it. You will... <laughs> I won't be worried about it. So. <laughs> now, this is the right time and the happy time. The offertory time. Do we have ushers to help us out to collect the money? Thank you, guys. Will you rise, please? It is hard to be focused on your will, oh God. There are so many distractions in this world. There are so many distractions that call our attention in this world that we have to confess that we so many times forget about you are the first. You must be the first thing in our lives. Forgive us, oh God, and uh, when we present this offering, this sacrifice of love to you, we are committing ourselves once more to hear your voice, to seek your will. Receive it, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. 
Amen. Be seated, please. It is time to go home. It is time to go back to the worldly, the, to the early responsibilities. Go forth. And as you go, walk in God's presence. Let your light shine and share Christ's love. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with us all today and forevermore. Amen. Last song, number 95 in your, no, 600, sorry, 600 in your books or on the screens. Will you stand up and join me, please? Sing the Norway again to me Wonderful words of life Let me more of their beauty see Wonderful words of life Love. 